As we move through this morning, we're going to talk a little bit about climate scientists pointing to rising carbon emissions in the air as a leading cause of global warming. Uh, stopping that carbon from being released is one solution, Maria. It is very complicated, very expensive, but as Dave Malkoff explains, one company is trying to do it. In the middle of Illinois, there is a plant that turns corn into fuel. This is our main compression building. It also makes a lot of earth warming carbon dioxide. Early next year, when the plant goes online, Archer Daniels Midland will use this maze of pipes and compressors. So there is quite a bit of piping that connects to each one of these compressors through the piping that you see below. To catch the CO2 before it goes into the air. So we essentially take, if you took a block of CO2, that's, you know, a little over a one cubic foot, it, we'd compress it down to a square inch. The amount of gas we're talking about here is hard to describe until you stand next to one of these giant rail car tankers. You would have to have about 80 of these behind me to describe the amount of gas they will eventually push down in the ground in a single day. I'm Rob Finley. I'm a geologist with the University of Illinois. Turns out this area is perfect to store carbon underground, underneath the pump, way down deep. There is an ocean of salt water nobody can drink and sandstone that can trap the carbon. This is deep. We're talking 40 Statues of Liberty deep, all kept in place by hard shale. So it stands on top of here almost like a wine cork and doesn't let any of that gas out into the atmosphere. Correct. Not every factory sits on the right kind of geology. Pump carbon where the earth can't hold it and the groundwater turns into soda water or worse. This is a, a model project for the development and application of this technology. But it would have to massively scale up around the world to even have any kind of effect, right? Absolutely. That's why they are constantly testing the groundwater here and feeling for earthquakes, hoping to prove a project of this size is much more than just a winding pipe dream. Okay, so here was my question. Those three layers of shale keep the gas underground for thousands of years. But what if in 10, 15, 100 years, someone comes by and says, hey, let's frack that shale down yeah, there. Maybe, shale maybe, we there. Can, maybe we can get gas or maybe we can get oil out of there. The, the geologist we talked to says that it's not tempting because that kind of shale doesn't have gas. It doesn't okay. have oil. So no one's going to come by and start breaking it up. But it's so experimental, and we need to see whether this is a real solution for a plant like this and yeah. other plants as well. Sure. Yeah. We thank you, good sir, for being here this morning. <laughs> and we have so much more coming up on AMHQ.